Uh, lead source data. It's something that every MOPS professional knows about. It's not everybody's favorite topic, but it's something that you really need to get done right. So that way you can better understand what are the different sources that are bringing people into my database? And also, what are they most recently engaging with? This is going to give you two key attribution points, such as first touch, your original fields, as well as last touch, your most recent fields. We want to be able to set this up in HubSpot or another marketing automation platform to be able to capture this data effectively. Lead source data is very often brought together based upon your UTM values. These UTM values could be paid search, paid social, web direct, organic search, or organic social. Uh, but they can also be offline activities, such as your event list uploads, or people that are sourced by the sales team from a sales outbound perspective. Maybe you have a data vendor that you're capturing people from. You want all of these to be defined. So that's what we're going to do today. I am going to walk you through a workshop that we take most of our clients through when we start to define lead source automation. So that way we can make sure that the teams are all aligned on what our lead source values need to be before we ever start building. Let's get started. Now to capture your lead source data effectively, we're going to want to make sure that we have a few key fields created in both your CRM as well as your marketing automation platform. I'm going to dig into what those are now. So we have a few different fields to capture. First of all is where did the conversion come from? This is going to be lead source and lead source latest. Again, we want to capture the first time that somebody engaged with us, which is your lead source, as well as what was the most recent engagement. This is lead source latest. This is based upon UTM medium. So in order to capture that, we need to make sure that we have UTM medium as a text field in both of those systems. We will be taking the data from the cookie, storing it here, and then later normalizing it in your marketing automation platform into lead source and lead source latest. The next field is lead source detail. So this is most often uh, associated with UTM source. So think lead source paid social, Lead source detail equals LinkedIn. We're giving you a level of detail that you don't have in your primary source field. So we will have lead source detail, lead source detail latest, and UTM source as the fields to be created. Then we also want to understand is what did they convert on? So that is where we will have lead source program and lead source program latest. This is the actual offer that they converted on. So this might be a Salesforce campaign, request a demo or event with the event name that took place in Q3 of 2024. Uh, so that is what you are going to be populating in your lead source program field. And then an optional field is what did the person tell us? So this is going to be your self-reported source data. So we can we can identify that for the first time as well as the most recent time. Um, oftentimes, this is going to be captured on a form such as a demo request or contact sales form. Uh, this is your plain text open field of how did you hear about us? This is really helpful to get an understanding of what resonated strongest with somebody versus what can I actually capture from an automation perspective. So now that we have identified the fields that we are going to require, and again, we're looking at lead source, lead source latest, UTM medium, lead source detail, lead source detail latest, UTM source, lead source program, lead source program latest, and then our optional fields of self-reported source and self-reported source latest. Once we've identified that we need these fields, we're going to need to populate those fields with the specific values that we are going to ultimately be normalizing. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we are taking UTM values. So UTM medium is going to be normalized into a lead source value. UTM source is going to be normalized into a lead source detail value. And that is what we are going to talk about next.
The best way to go about doing this is to, first of all, identify all of the sources of data that you have going into your database. We're starting this template with a good uh, general recommendation, but this is going to largely depend on what it is that you have uh, sourcing your leads. So think about things coming from a digital perspective um, as well as an offline perspective. The digital is largely going to be covered here, but there may be some integration points. Um, there may be some data vendors that you're working with specifically that you want to connect with. Um, one that I will commonly work with uh, clients on is if they are utilizing content syndication programs, for example, we might add a, uh, a listing here for content syndication and then and then uh, specify the vendor that they have. So we're just going to work through this together. Um, and this is what I take all of our stakeholders through. Um, so we have marketing operations, a part of this conversation, we have our digital marketing team, because they might know the specific UTMs that their teams are are currently utilizing. And I always think as long as it's not completely broken, um, we like to try and utilize what is currently working, and then making that uh, fit into this model as opposed to doing a bunch of change management. But if you have a, a, a poorly defined UTM structure, this is a great time to go about doing that. So what we're going to do is we are going to map uh, web direct to direct, organic search to organic, organic social to social. You want these two things to be uh, unique and different. Um, and I always try and start with sort of what the other vendors in the in the in the space are trying to normalize against. So, you know, if you're a HubSpot client, for example, you may want to take a look at how traffic is organized in each of their sources for latest and original source. Um, or you may want to use the Google uh, default channel groupings as a starting point. Um, so that's kind of where a lot of this is coming from. So what we will see here is UTM medium is going to be social versus paid social. Uh, paid search would be maybe PPC for pay per click. Um, you may want to have this be set to paid search or CPC. Um, this is definitely an area where partnering with your marketing team is good, but also just trying to identify what some of your other uh, vendors are using as well uh, is key. Online referrals, I do specify because sometimes word of mouth, we might change that with a client to say offline referral. So then we have online referral and offline referral. This is simply just saying that this is traffic that's coming from a third party website that you are not officially um, identifying. List uploads. Um, I love to call these cold list uploads because we do want to specify that if we are getting a bunch of names, even if they are targeted names in our target accounts and, and we're getting them from Zoom Info, they are still cold leads that we are uploading into our database. So don't just think of this as marketing paid uh, lists, which nobody's doing anymore, but most uh, most of our clients that we have are utilizing data vendors in some capacity to fill out their buying teams. Uh, we do want to have a source that's defined for sales outbound. So largely, if this is just being created by the sales team, this is going to um, we're going to default a UTM value to outbound in our lead source automation that we'll talk about in a future in a future video. Um, but we want to be able to identify that you know these people were created by sales. So sales outbound um, email very easy to map to email event. Same thing here. Um, some organizations will break out all of their events into different lead sources values. We don't necessarily uh, propose that as a solution. Our, our viewpoint is, is as you think about how you want to build out reporting and as people are asking questions about what's happening within the database, you want to be able to use your lead source values of this to give you a, a, a high level view into what's working and then uh, with without requiring pulling in a lot of different data values. So, for example, if you wanted to know how all of your events did in Q3, you could then pull a report where lead source equals event, whereas on the lead source data detail, which again is just a more granular look into the lead source, that is where we're going to start to break things out by Google Bing uh, for search or Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter X for social for social. Um, and then in the case of events, this is where we might break out trade shows, field events, partner events, webinars, podcasts, think about events being both physical and virtual. Um, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is something that you can customize and modify to your team. Um, one question that I often get is where should we categorize web chat? And it's a great question. 
Uh, we identify web chat as a it's it's just like a form, right? We wouldn't have a lead source value for web form. We want to know how did they get to the website. So ideally, you're configuring your web chat client um, to pass UTM values into your systems. Um, so that way, when somebody fills out the form, you're still able to capture the UTMs that they had coming through. Um, if that's not a capability that you have uh, or it's not working, you could set a value for web chat. But we really try to uh, try to avoid that because then you start to lose a lot of detail. Are your chats coming from paid social? Are they coming from paid search? Are they coming organically? We just don't know um, if we are treating that as its own pick list. Same thing on the webinar front. So if you're doing a third party webinar or you're getting data from a partner webinar at that point, that is the source you're getting it from a third party. Um, but if somebody's coming in and registering for a webinar or they are uh, signing up for an on demand webinar, we want to make sure that we're capturing the source data, whereas we might actually consider the webinar itself the program as opposed to the source of the data. That then moves us into lead source program. So this field um, is actually not going to be set based upon UTM values. This is going to be a field that it gets set in a local program. Um, so as you build out a form fill workflow or a form fill smart campaign, um, you are setting the data value for lead source program. And for the most part, we want that to match to the Salesforce campaign name if you're utilizing Salesforce campaigns. And if you're utilizing Salesforce, Salesforce, we do still recommend utilizing Salesforce campaigns. This is a great way that you can start to do um, single touch attribution from a first touch and a last touch perspective, as well as multi touch attribution um, by having people get stored in Salesforce campaigns as campaign members, you get a lot more granular data into what all of the activities are that somebody's taking with you. Um, and as a as a kind of benefit of going with this UTM route, you can actually create automation on the Salesforce side to stamp UTMs on the campaign member. And it gives you another layer of reporting where you can start to actually dive into where are my demo requests coming from? Well, if you have UTM medium and UTM source as fields on the campaign member, and when that campaign member gets created, if you copy those data values over with like a Salesforce flow, um, you will be able to report on that data moving forward. So nice little pro tip there for you if you are currently kind of re-architecting how your lead source is going to work. And that could be a future video that we work on uh, and that I share with you together. Uh, and then the last thing, the the what person, what the person told us, just as a reminder, it's not it's not a pick list, it's not anything like that. This is just going to be an open text field that somebody's going to be able to fill out. Um, so that is the strategic view into your lead source data. We want to understand where did somebody come from? We want to understand what did they convert on? And we want to understand how they heard about us um, or what the person told us, right? Um, so lead source, lead source detail, lead source program. We want to make sure that at the very least, we are stamping this for the first time and the most recent time. So that way we get that first touch and latest touch. And then you can start to use that latest data for many different things. If you want to understand how did somebody MQL, what was the latest thing that they did before they became a sales ready lead with us? Well, if you wanted, if you want to be able to capture that, you have the latest value that you can copy into another field. Um, and you can see where we're going to take that in some of our future, uh, in some of our future videos. So that's what we're ultimately building toward is the where, what, and how somebody heard about us and came to us. So if this is something that you are interested in building, uh, we have a video available for you that you can click that should be on the screen right now that will walk you through how to go about building your lead source process in a marketing automation platform. Thank you. Have a great day.